Please repeat it after me. There is, there is a word from God today. A word from God today. And it's for me. And it is for me. Our word today comes from 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 6 through 8, and then 16 through 18. That's 2 Timothy. That's towards the back of the Bible, <laughs> after 1 Timothy and before Titus. Fourth chapter, verses 6 through 8, verses 16 through 18. You can say amen when you get there. Amen. amen. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version today. Hear the word of the Lord as for me. I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearance. Going down to verse 16, at my first defense, no one, no one, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Today is the day that I preach the sermon I have dreamed of and dreaded. For quite some time. I, I, I literally dream and dread preaching on days of endings and new beginnings. I'm talking about endings and new beginnings, like a retirement or a home going or a wedding. Brother and sister Washington. Or even a relocation. Doctor and soon to be Dr. Pope. However, on this special day, we, we also pause to recognize and appreciate the men who are stepping up as fathers and father figures. I'm led to address the concept of success. Success. The definition of success. What it is and what it is not. Now, now, not too long ago, I, I was watching the television and, and this news bit came on. Uh, it was a gentleman who had just left family court. And he had gone to family court and the judge had basically given him one more chance to live into his court-ordered child support. He was happy. He was talking about how he wants to do something positive for his children. He was talking about how he wanted to leave something good for his children. This news reporter was saying, you know, so how are you going to do that? Oh, I'm going to be a better father. Now, that all sounded good until the news reporter said, but you have 22 children. By 14 different women. Let me say this as plainly as I can. Making a baby does not make you a dad. Most people who have something going for themselves desire to do a, a work that is worthy of remembrance. Worthy of remembrance. I'm talking about a legacy right now. Uh, most people who have something special on the inside desire to leave something special on the outside that will be remembered or, or recited or, or practiced long after we have drawn our last breath. In today's scripture lesson, Paul is passing on to Timothy, his son in the ministry, or his protege, something 
anything uh, special that he hopes will be remembered yeah. or recited or practiced long after he has drawn his last breath. And in this respect, I am no different from Paul. However, I'll come back to that in, in, a, in a moment. You know, uh, many theologians consider 2 Timothy to be Paul's last will and testament. However, come on, when I when I read and, and pray over Paul's words, I, I hear his definition or recipe for success. I find this especially ironic in light of Paul's circumstances when he's providing his definition or his recipe. You see, Paul is languishing in a Roman jail, waiting for the emperor to determine whether he's going to live or, or die. And within
But think about it. When was the last time we invited somebody to church? When was the last time we offered to pray with somebody that we did not know that we knew was hurting? When was the last time that we offered to feed somebody who was hungry? When was the last time we visited someone who was in jail or, or, or in a hospital? When was the last time we offered to mentor a young person or visit a widow? When was the last time we offered up a smile to somebody who was wound up or a shoulder to somebody who was bound up? I'm talking about successful things. However, in Paul, we see a failed success. And by the world standards, Paul was a hot mess. <laughs> yes, he was. The majority of the churches that Paul planted were constantly in conflict, unlike today's churches. Paul's theology was constantly being called into question by the educated elite. Paul was run out of more than one town for preaching a gospel that upset the status quo. Uh, so what was it about Paul that made such a failure such a success? I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I have fought the good fight. I'm going to try not to shout right now. Not I have won the fight.
Now, 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 now. I'm with Paul. I'm with Paul. I'm with Paul. I'm with Paul. In my desire for success, you know. I want something that is the same yesterday, the same today, and the same tomorrow. I want something that does not shift with public opinion. I want something that is storm-proof and fireproof and wind-proof and fool-proof and gossip-proof and disease-proof and hater-proof. Life is going to cause folks to turn on you, man. Talk about you like 